Hi everyone, and welcome to the Dynamic Programming Interview Series. Today, we're going to talk about a very common and very important algorithm interview question, the maximum subarray problem. Let's start by understanding what the problem is asking. Suppose you're given an array of integers. Some numbers are positive, some are negative. Your task is to find a contiguous subarray. That means the numbers must be next to each other, such that the sum of those numbers is as large as possible and then return that maximum sum. Let's walk through an example. Here's the array. Minus two, one, minus three, four, minus one, two, one, minus five, and four. We want to find a contiguous part of this array whose sum is the largest possible. For example, you could pick the first four numbers, minus two, one, minus three, and four. Their sum is zero, definitely not the largest. Or you could just pick a single number, like 4. That still counts as a valid subarray. But what you can't do is skip around and pick only the positive numbers. Sure, that would give you a larger sum. But since they're not all next to each other, it breaks the rule of continuity. So what's the correct answer here? If we choose the subarray, 4, minus 1, 2, 1, the sum is 6. That's the largest sum we can get from any contiguous subarray in this example, so the final answer is six. Now, how do we actually solve this problem? Let's begin with the most straightforward approach, brute force. To make it simple, let's just look at the first four elements, minus two, one, minus three, four. We list out all possible contiguous subarrays and calculate their sums. There are four ways to choose just one element, three ways to choose two elements in a row, two ways to choose three elements, and one way to pick all four. That gives us a total of 10 combinations. The largest sum among them is four. We can also write a simple Python snippet to do the same thing. The idea is, loop through every possible starting and ending index, calculate the sum of that subarray, and keep track of the largest one we find. This approach is easy to understand and not too hard to code but it's not very efficient. If the array has n elements, the time complexity is O n squared. So it's not ideal when you're working with large input. Is there a smarter way? Yes, and this is where our main character comes in, the Cadane's algorithm. Cadane's algorithm is a clever and efficient solution using dynamic programming. To help explain it, let's think about it like a series of stock trades. Each number in the array represents the gain or loss of a day. Positive numbers mean profit, negative numbers mean loss. You want to find the best stretch of days, a continuous period, where your net profit is the highest. Each day, you face a decision. Do you want to hold your position and add today's result to your running total? Or do you want to cut your losses and start fresh from today? Cadane's algorithm is simply doing that exact check at every step. Keep adding the current number to your running sum if it's better, or reset and start from today, if today's number alone is better than continuing the old sum. We'll use a variable called current sum to track the running sum of the current subarray, and another variable called max sum to record the best result we've seen so far. Each day, we ask ourselves, would it be better to add today's value to current sum, or just start fresh from today? If adding it is better, we continue. If today's value alone is better, we reset current sum to today's value. This gives us the core update rule of Cadane's algorithm. Today's decision only depends on yesterday's result and today's value. Either we keep going or we start fresh. Once we finish looping through the array, max sum will contain the maximum subarray sum. Let's walk through the example step-by-step step using Cadane's algorithm. The first number is minus two. We haven't seen anything before, so both current sum and max sum are minus two. Next is one. Add one to current sum, minus two plus one equals minus one. Or just start fresh with one. One is bigger, so we reset. Current sum becomes one, and max sum updates to one. Next number, minus three. Add it to current sum, one plus minus three equals minus two. Or start fresh with minus three. Minus two is better, so we continue. Current sum becomes minus two, max sum stays one. Next is four, add it to current sum, minus two plus four equals two, or just take four by itself, four is better. 
So we reset again. Current sum becomes 4, and max sum becomes 4. Next up is minus 1. 4 plus minus 1 equals 3. That's better than just minus 1, so we continue. Current sum is now 3, max sum stays 4. Next number, 2. 3 plus 2 equals 5. Better than 2 alone. Continue. Current sum becomes 5, max sum updates to 5. Then comes 1. 5 plus 1 equals 6. That's better than 1. Keep going. Current sum is 6, max sum becomes 6. Next number is minus 5. 6 plus minus 5 equals 1. Still better than minus 5, so we keep going. Current sum becomes 1, max sum stays at 6. Last number, 4. 1 plus 4 equals 5. Better than just 4, so we continue. Current sum becomes 5, but max sum remains 6. We've now gone through the whole array. The biggest sum we ever saw was 6, so that's our final answer. Here's how Cadane's algorithm looks in Python. It's short, clean, and very efficient. At each step, we're just making a local decision. Keep going or reset. We only use a single loop, so the time complexity is O-N, and we only use two variables, so the space complexity is O-1. Now let's wrap up by asking, why is Cadane's algorithm considered dynamic programming? First, it has optimal substructure. The best answer at position i depends only on the result at i minus 1, not on the full history. Second, it has overlapping subproblems. We're repeating the same kind of decision at each step, which we can handle efficiently using just a running state. Because it has both of these properties, we're able to solve the problem in such a clean and elegant way. All right, that's all for today's topic on the maximum subarray problem. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like, comment, or share it with someone preparing for coding interviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.